Thursday, obviously uh, a big day for the White House. They make these calls to the troops. Uh, Biden called into the Today Show. He talked to Al Roker, which he's now done, I guess, for the last couple of years, uh, where he gets a plug about how great he is and how amazing he is. Uh, but when he was asked by Al Roker what he's thankful for, he talked about, or what he wants for the American people, he talked about unity. And then his campaign blows that all up, putting up this guide to dealing with MAGA folks at the table. And the funny thing is, it's all full of lies. It was all full of things about the border, foreign policy, the economy, trying to claim that Trump wasn't right and that Biden was. It was ridiculous. So to break it all down, we've got a great panel to kick off the week. Seth Denson, he has a, a new column, The Right Side of Things. He's a contributor at Newsmax. We've got Grace Curley, the host of The Grace Curley Show. She's a columnist for the Boston Herald and a contributor at The Spectator. Let's bring him in and kick off this discussion. Grace, Seth, thanks for being with us. Uh, happy belated Thanksgiving. I trust you both had a great, great holiday. Uh, Seth, I'm flat proud as I... Uh, to, to see on Instagram, you putting up your decorations in the Denson household after Thanksgiving dinner is over. I just, I appreciate a man who understands the sequence and the, the respect that each holiday in itself deserves. So thank you for, uh, for doing that. Uh, it, it's a great American. There's an order to things, Sean. There is an order. Uh, and respect. that order comes in whatever order my wife tells me. They tell me. <laughs> I, I know that. I think I'd probably change my tune quick. Um, <laughs> I do want to stick on the topic of Thanksgiving, though. The thing that I thought was so funny is my kids love watching the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. They have since they were kids. And President Biden calls in Al Roker for his uh, in-kind contribution from NBC every year. And... In the process of this, Al's asking him what he wants and all that kind of stuff. And he talks about unity. Grace, the thing that was so funny is this continues to be this Biden thing. We want unity. I represent everyone. And then the actions don't match the words because moments after that, his campaign on Instagram puts out this guide um, to to uh, talk everything that is crazy about your MAGA family that might say at dinner that's just wrong. And I thought to myself, Okay, that's not exactly keeping with the unity theme when you're basically trying to call out other Americans on a day like that. Yeah, and this isn't the first time they've done this. I think when Ron Klain was still in the White House and there was all these claniacs running about, they posted a similar guide basically saying, like, this is how you can debunk the fake news from your relatives. Um, the relatives who seem to be uh, stable and able to recognize reality and maybe bought the items at the grocery store for Thanksgiving and know what's going on. I just, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of talking politics at Thanksgiving, but if someone came with a list of, you know, wonderful reasons that I should love the Biden administration, I might have to check out and go back home because it's just it's ridiculous. And, and you really do have to be disconnected to what's going on to buy this stuff. And I think that's who they're going for. They're going for kids who sit on TikTok all day and just consume these things and regurgitate them. So they'll probably have good luck with with that faction of their party. But everybody else is not not going to be focused on this. You know, Seth, one of the things that I thought caught my eye that would be very fun to talk about it at a dinner table down there in Texas where you are is that they said the border was more secure under Trump and they were debunking this. And I'm thinking to myself, is that really where you want to go? Is that one of the highlights that like with people screaming, scree you know, just streaming over the border on a daily basis, the number of people that we've talked about that have been on the terrorist watch list, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's no one that denies this. Democratic mayors and governors are all saying that the border is unsecure and not, not uh, closed by any means. I mean, I'm thinking to myself, if I'm sitting at a dinner table down there in Texas, I, I would be, I, I think, lampooned for bringing that up using the talking points that they sent out. Yeah, the uh, the the border door has securely been held open, uh, yeah. and I think that is something that we listen. We we've dealt with border issues in Texas my entire life. I got asked this recently about what is my take on the border. Listen, border has been part of every conversation we've ever had. I mean, I, I, from the time I was little, it's an essential component of our everyday life. But nonetheless, sitting here and hearing these talking points uh, around this secure border, it, it's laughable. Uh, and anybody that can walk down the street, not only in Texas, by the way, New York, right. uh, we'll, we'll see that it's, 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 it's just not true. At some point, 
if we keep being told uh, it's it's sunny outside, but there's pouring rain, we got to wake up and look outside and say, yes, we're not being told the truth. I just, Grace, the thing that I thought was interesting, and I'm going to go through a couple more of them, but the, the border one, I thought to myself, like I said, you have Democratic governors and, and mayors like Eric Adams saying that the border is not secure, that their liberal cities, their blue cities are being overrun, that they can't handle the crisis there. And yet this is the one talking point that they think is smart to go to a Thanksgiving dis- dinner and fight about, that the border's secure. I mean, even the liberals haven't agreed with them on that. Yeah. And after seeing the response that Eric Adams is getting and the raids and the investigations, not saying it has anything to do with the fact that he's been pretty outspoken about the border. I don't think you're going to see a lot of other Democrat mayors coming forward and challenging the Biden administration. But something I was just thinking of when we're talking about this list, I am fine if I'm with people at a social event, not talking politics. It's really it's not the most interesting part of my life. However, If one of my cousins or someone showed up with this list, then it's kind of like, and I wonder if Seth would agree, then it's kind of like, okay, now I'll meet you at the table. Like, you want to talk about it? You want to have your list? Let's go through the facts. Because then it's no holds barred. Then it's open for everybody to talk. I See, I agree. I I was like, I don't, I don't want, I actually want a Thanksgiving where it's free from this. I don't, I mean, I get a lot of relatives that think that somehow that because I'm there, that I'm going to answer all the questions that they had burning about mm-hmm. politics and Trump and whatever. But Seth, you're, you know, well-versed in the economy. This is one of their things. The economy was better during Trump. This is one of the things that they're debunking. And it says wrong. Trump had the worst jobs record of any president since the depression. Well, number one, that's, because of COVID. And it's similarly the recovery right now. It's not like Biden's actually creating their jobs are coming back, but inflation was lower. Unemployment was lower. Gas prices were lower. And to your point about going to the grocery store, I thought to myself, anybody who's taken part in preparing Thanksgiving dinner sees this, whether they're driving to the grocery store and putting gas in their car, whether or not they've opened a bill and seen what their mortgage interest rates or their credit card interest rates have done. Uh, whether they're at the grocery store buying goods and services. And it says, just look at your Thanksgiving costs compared to last year. Gas prices cheaper, turkey cheaper. But do you see the sleight of hand, Seth Denson? Mm -hmm. Look at your Thanksgiving costs compared to last year. Well, who was president last year? Not Donald Trump, (laughs) Joe Biden. That was pretty cute. But I mean, to Grace's point, it's like, you want to bring that to me? You're, You're basically setting little Bobby off to go fight with this. Look at your prices from last year. All it takes is like a two-year-old to say, Joe Biden was president last year, not Donald Trump. Yeah, this is a disgusting looking stew, so much so that you would think a Democrat made it. Uh, I think we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But nonetheless, it it is one of those things. It's funny. If you think about the fact that the the talking point of the jobs, you mentioned the COVID. Well, all of the jobs that Biden is out there touting are rebound jobs anyway. They're just the jobs that came back. Uh, and that, and that's part one. The other part of it is, is, is when we talk about, and I saw Kareem Jean-Pierre out there talking about 4% lower cost for Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, that's after the 19% higher cost last year. Uh, and so as we start to think about what inflation has done, collectively, since Joe Biden took office, inflation is up a combined 20% overall. 20% overall. Wages during the same time, 12%. That's an 8% variance there. Uh, and so it's, it's pinpointing these topics that they think will be good. But here's the reality. Facts don't care about feelings. They just don't. Uh, And we are feeling the impact of the negative economy at the dinner table and really everywhere else. But that's the thing, Grace, is that like I I looked at this thing and I thought to myself, okay, let's start with the divisiveness, which is where we started. Biden preaches unity. We need to get along. I'm the president for all people. And then he does things over and over again to divide us, to talk about the MAGA extremists, the Trump people, the, you know, everybody's gets put into their little camp. But then secondly, they send up these talking points. And one of them is Trump was going to take away social security and Medicare, uh, to, and I'm thinking to myself, I, I was in the room over and over again when we were talking about budgets and deficits. And the president would say, there's no way we're touching any of this stuff, the Medicare and the social security. There was never a proposal to do it. And I think to myself, from a tactical standpoint, the Biden team, the Biden campaign team has been getting killed on this whole idea of touting Bidenomics. I've said this for a long time. Elections really come down to two things, Se- you know, personal security and economic security and their gut feelings. Either you feel safe or you don't. No one can convince you that with a government statistic and economic say, you know, uh, security that you either feel like your job and you have enough money in the bank or you don't. And no one can tell you that. It's a feeling that manifests itself through your experiences 
kind of living in the real world, that your car is, you know, can you afford it? Are you putting money away? Whatever. And these guys are sending this out on Thanksgiving. And I'm thinking to myself, this is just stupid. It's a bad campaign tactic. Never mind the falsehoods and the stupidness of how they're approaching it. You're, you're reinforcing that this guy, like no one thinks that Biden is doing a good job on the border or the economy. And yet that's what they want to put forward. Yeah. And I love how you guys keep referencing how they keep talking about the improvements since last year when he was president, because I always make this comparison, but it still works. It's like if someone came into your house, threw a hammer through your TV and then was like, hey, I'm working on it. I I've really fixed up the TV. I think it looks a lot better. And you'd be saying to them, well, it wasn't broken. Like you didn't need to throw the hammer through it and then you wouldn't need to fix it. And this is part of the problem. And what you're seeing now in both of these talking points and just the way that Biden and not just Biden, I mean, I heard over the weekend Trudeau saying it as well, but the fact that they keep focusing on mega MAGA policies and they keep focusing on Trump, it takes me back to 2020 where it was never about Joe Biden. It was never about his message. It was never about what he could accomplish. It was always his biggest, biggest plus as far as Democrats were concerned is that he was not Donald Trump. Now we go into 2024 though, Sean, and he has a resume that people can look at. So now it's going to be a little trickier for them. It can't just be Trump bad, MAGA bad, all these things, fear mongering, because now people have three and a half, almost four years to look at and say, well, what have you done? You, you haven't really made things better for me. And in fact, when I look back to when Trump was president, Things were a little bit smoother then. So I don't know how long this talking point list of like mega MAGA stuff, I don't know if that's going to be as effective the second time around. <laughs> 